Award season has now officially kicked off with the announcement of the nominations for the 71st annual Golden Globes. Now, while these nominations and eventual winners aren't decided by anybody in, inside the industry, it's from the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, which is a very small group of foreign journalists covering Hollywood, the Golden Globes has still always historically been a trendsetter. Uh, it, has, it really has their... Um, their finger on the pulse of what the industry is thinking for the eventual other awards shows that will be coming down the line. And true enough, there are a lot of similarities with the SAG nominations that came out yesterday. And the SAG nominations are a very good indicator of how the Oscars are going to go because the actor actors are the biggest voting group in the Academy. Uh, now, as they do every year, the Golden Globes splits their major categories into two, drama and comedy musical. Uh, they do that for the best picture, actor, and actress categories. And I think that's a very, basically it's a very clever move to be able to nominate as many big stars as possible and to fill the Beverly Hills Hilton with as many celebrities as possible to make for one hell of a telecast, which will be hosted again this year by Tina Fey and Amy Poehler, who the Hollywood Foreign Press Association is so enamored with, they will not only host this year, but they're already signed for next year as well. So I think it'll be an interesting night. And it's an interesting night because there are some surprises here. Now, leading the pack is 12 Years a Slave and American Hustle. Now, while that's not a surprise, I'm sure the 12 Years a Slave team is breathing a sigh of relief that they did show, have a stronger showing as was anticipated because that certainly would have been the headline if they'd been shut out. And they did very well in the SAG nominations. So 12 Years continues its predicted uh, march toward the Oscars. Uh, now, American Hustle, obviously, people were predicting that after its very strong showing, even though it came out so late in the game. But there were the surprises I'm talking about are I'm I'm thrilled. Rush had some very key nominations here. One of my favorite films of the year, Philomena. Uh, is here as well, not forgotten, which is great. I had some concerns that it wasn't running a very good Oscar campaign, uh, but I guess it's doing a good job at least courting the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. And this slew of nominations before ballots are due for some of the other major awards shows could really help Philomena's chances. Because that's another great thing about the Golden Globes. It's such a big high priority because of that telecast on NBC uh, that it does sway voter opinion. So that's another reason these nominations are key and why producers spend so much money whining and dining the Hollywood Foreign Press Association why you see all those jokes, particularly from Ricky Gervais when he was hosting, that you can uh, technically buy a Golden Globe. Uh, and the other big surprise, the head scratcher, there's ever, almost every year there's a movie that the industry falls in love with, which audiences just can't wrap their minds around why Hollywood is so enamored. And I feel this year that film is Nebraska. Huge showing. SAG Awards, huge showing here. I can't even personally get through the trailer, but kudos to Alexander Payne. You have to admit, he knows what voters like. And he, you know, I think also his, his reputation comes into play there to some degree as well. So without further ado, let's get into the, uh, the actual nominations, the major categories in film, uh, and some anal analysis. Okay, so we'll start out with drama. Now in the best picture category, we have 12 Years a Slave, no surprise there. Now here's surprising, Captain Phillips. That's a big surprise, big showing, Captain Phillips, um, Scott Rudin is the producer of that film. He has a very good uh, a relationship with the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. And he, he really took it to the mat here and utilized that relationship. And you see some really impressive nominations here. One I'm particularly excited about, which, which we'll get to shortly. All right, so Captain Phillips, best picture drama. Who would have seen that coming? Nobody. Um, Gravity, I think a lot of people want that. Uh, Philomena, I'm very happy to see it in this category. And Rush. I think that's very, very exciting. That's a great group. And with those two wild cards, three wild cards, I think Philomena counts as a wild card. Uh, only 12 Years of Slave and Gravity were expected, but I think Captain Phillips, Philomena, and Rush, uh, and then also Rush was made in the UK. That might be why uh, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association is so into it. But that's very exciting for those three films to really boost their Oscar um, their Oscar profile, their chances there. So great, great, uh, great race there. Who would I be rooting for? Well, Rush, I have to say. Out of that group, Rush, Rush is actually out of that list. Rush is the only film at the moment that is on my top 10 list of the year out of that group. So I really would like to see it take that. All right, so that's the best. Uh, uh, by the way, though, I don't think it's going to happen, but that's what I like to see happen. I think 12 Years a Slave will probably take that. Um, I think that's almost certain. All right, so best actor, drama. Uh, Chuitol Ejiofor for 12 Years a Slave. I think everybody was expecting that. Now here's a great surprise, Idris Elba as Mandela. So happy to see this. He's fantastic in the role. This film is also on my top 10 list so far for the year. I think he's a really fantastic actor. This is the kind of recognition he needs to take his career in Hollywood to the next level. Uh, and also really get some uh, attention for that film, which really desperately needs it. Some could argue that maybe what if he had gotten this nomination if Mandela hadn't tragically passed away? 
we'll never know. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad to see him competing here. And I think it would cheapen the quality of his performance to feel this was just a, you know, uh, a reflection of Mandela's tragic passing away. The performance deserves to be nominated. Okay, Captain, uh, Captain Phillips, Tom Hanks. That's ridiculous. That's crazy. He's very good in the role. I don't know if I would give him best actor category. This is might be, you know, this could be technically one of those situations where the Hollywood Foreign Press Association just wants to get Tom Hanks on their red carpet, uh, which everyone's very aware of after their infamous nominations for The Tourist with Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie. But they're still doing it. But this has some more credibility. Then Matthew McConaughey for Dallas Buyers Club. That's so nice for him. He he also got the SAG nomination. This is his year to finally walk the red carpet. People wanted to see him walk it last year, but now he's finally going to be there. I think this is just such a great next step in his career. And when you couple this with him being the star of the upcoming Christopher Nolan film, Interstellar, in 2014, he is really not, not only becoming, not only regaining his former movie star status, but reaching new heights that he has never reached before. I'm very happy for him. And then also I'm happy to see Robert Redford for All Is Lost here. We're seeing the Robert Redford versus Bruce Dern uh, matchup for Best Actor at the Oscars eventually continue to take shape. There was some concern after Robert Redford was snubbed by the SAG Awards, uh, so we'll see if that actually hurts him in the, for getting that Oscar nomination, because here the categories are split, so there's more room for him. But I do believe that's what we're going to eventually see. But he's, he's nominated here. Uh, I, it's only really big, huge nomination for All Is Lost. But uh, he's a, he, it's a movie just with him on screen, and he's very good. Uh, that's a great category. I think you can take Tom Hanks out of that. But as for the rest of the group, it's up for grabs. I don't think Chiwetel Ejiofor has his locked up, uh, nor does Matthew McConaughey. I think Idris, Al Idris Elba might, you might take him out of there because I don't see that kind of love for Mandela yet. But I think this is, you know, McConaughey, Ejiofor, and Redford are really the ones competing here. Uh, okay, Best Actress Drama. Kate Blanchett for Blue Jasmine. Everybody says she's the front runner. She has this locked up. I think there's a very good chance. I don't agree with that, but I think that she. I think that the camp, the Oscar campaign, the awards campaign for Blue Jasmine is amazing. It's so well orchestrated that I think that that's why she's the front runner. I mean, it's a good performance, but it's not as good as some of her competitors. Uh, next up, Sandra Bullock for Gravity. Uh, I think obviously a lot of people. I didn't like the performance, but a lot of people really liked it. It's key to the film, as key as Robert Redford's performance is to All Is Lost. So I think that's another reason you're seeing the nomination that she had to handle this movie solo, pretty much. Um, also, Sandra Bullock's such a recent winner. She's already, you know, had all of her Oscar coverage. I feel that the people, the industry likes to spread the love, but she's nominated here. Uh, then Judy Dench for Philomena. That's very exciting. As I said, I felt this film was going to be overlooked, seriously, but to see her get this nomination is great. It's the kind of uh, exposure she needs and that the movie needs, so good for her. Then Emma Thompson for Saving Mr. Banks. Only real big nomination for Saving Mr. Banks. I really want her to take this. I think it's very unlikely that she will win. I'm hoping Saving Mr. Banks picks up their Oscar campaign, uh, the game, their game, because it's really lacking at this point. But at least she got the nomination, uh, and it's so some recognition for that film. But it's not getting anywhere near the uh, the coverage and the uh, nominations I think it expected as a movie, uh, and deserves. It's my favorite movie of the year. All right, Kate Winslet, uh, Labor Day. What? The Golden Globes love Kate Winslet. Remember that year, I believe she won like both categories for actress and drama and musical comedy. I think they needed a spot to fill maybe, or maybe they just, she's really not comfy cozy with them at the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. I think that Labor Day isn't tracking at all. No one's really paying attention to it. So I think it's, you know, it's really a throwaway. But you know, as, as, it, as it said with Tom Hanks, they get to have her on her, their carpet. But you know, I don't really know how big of a star Kate Winslet is to the mainstream movie going audience. Uh, so. Interesting choice, but whatever, good for her. All right, next up, and you also, you know, Kate Winslet has so many awards at this point and so much cachet that you can never be embarrassed by nominating her. Okay, now let's move over to the comedy musical category. We have, for best picture, American Hustle, Her, Inside Lewin Davis, Nebraska, and The Wolf of Wall Street. So glad to see Wolf of Wall Street show up here. It was majorly snubbed over by uh, the SAG nominations. Uh, I don't really think that Wolf of Wall Street is an actor's movie, which might be hurting it there. Uh, you know, it's about materialism and greed and capitalism, and Leonardo DiCaprio isn't particularly well liked, although you will see he gets a nomination in just a moment, so that's great for him. But in this category, don't underestimate Nebraska, uh, and don't underestimate her and American Hustle. I think Inside Lewin Davis and Wolf of Wall Street are uh, the outside on the outside track here. I think their, their win is a nomination. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. But I think American Hustle, Her, and Nebraska have a lot more heat. And that's where you'll see this race kind of break down into that. So that, that's great for those films. What do I feel about going into Best Picture at the Oscars? You know, of course, there probably will be 10 spots this year because there's just so much attention and so many good contenders. But I think you're going to see more of the 
I think you might even see some surprises that you don't see here. I'm hoping to see Saving Mr. Banks make it into the uh, the Oscars. But with here, I think that her, American Hustle, inside Lewin Davis, I'm really surprised. I'm really surprised about that movie. As you might remember, I hate that movie. I think it's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. But it's on fire at the box office. So good for, good for it. Good for uh, Inside Lewin Davis. G glad to see the Coen brothers have not torpedoed their career. All right, next up, Best Actor Comedy Musical. Christian Bale, American Hustle. Um, Bruce Dern, Nebraska. There's the other half of that race I was telling you about. Leonardo DiCaprio, Wolf of Wall Street. Always a bridesmaid, never a bride. He must, he's, he, I'm sure he'll, he should just show up like in a sweat, sweatsuit, sweatpants and a sweatshirt and just hang out because he's never going to go up on the stage. All right, Oscar Isaac for Inside Lewin Davis. This nomination here makes the Best Picture nomination a little bit more legitimate because they really seem to have taken to that film, uh, as some people are, which is good. Um, then also Joaquin Phoenix for her. Uh, that's a great nomination, but I feel you're real, I think this really is Bruce Dern's award. That This is, you know, ever since he won that Best Actor at Cannes, he, and you know, he's getting a lot of attention and they like to, you know, when actors are in the twilight of their career, the Academy likes to award them because they don't know how much longer they'll be around to get that award. Well, they feel everybody else, Christian Bale here already has an Oscar, but it's nice to see him in the lead, you know, the main category instead of supporting. But I think they're going to feel all these other people will have a shot. Leonardo DiCaprio, who knows? DiCaprio's like 90, he'll get his Oscar. Um, and I bet it will even just be like an honorary Oscar. It won't even be in a category. Remember how upset Peter O'Toole was? All right, so that's nice. Bruce Dern, I hope he looks forward to his award. That's what you're going to see. And again, the Dern-Redford matchup taking shape. Fascinating to watch. Of the two, I actually would go for Redford. He's so good in All Is Lost. If you haven't seen All Is Lost, you should really check it out. All right, let's move on to Best Actress, Comedy Musical. Amy Adams, American Hustle. Uh, you know, David O. Russell, really, that guy does his actors right. They are almost all nominated here. It's very exciting for them. Uh, Julie Delpy for Before Midnight. That's surprising. Uh, I, I actually did not like her. I thought she was very annoying in the film. Uh, but, you know, it's good to see. She's, there are so many surprises in this category. Uh, she is actually one of the least surprising choices. So uh, there's a lot of respect, though, in the independent community for the before movies. So it's nice to see them getting national attention on a, a, on a broad scale like this. So it certainly would help the franchise. And it has its fan base. Okay, Greta Gerwig for Francis Ha. This is huge for Greta Gerwig. To go from Mumblecore to a Golden Globe nomination, stunning. I think that is just so impressive. Uh, that's going to really help her career, and which needs it at this point. Uh, she was in the, um, I think it was Greenberg with Ben Stiller, but she just has not been able to go beyond that. Uh, and I think this is going to help her a lot. When someone can, once a studio can say Golden Globe nominee, they will hire you. All right, so she'll at least continue to make small independent films. Then this is the most surprising one, I feel. Julia Louis-Dreyfus for Enough Said. And they didn't even nominate James Gandolfini for the film. Uh, and that's where the SAG nomination for uh, Best Actor w went to him because of his unfortunate, well, he's good in the movie. I don't really know if it's a Best Actor nomination anywhere. I saw the film. It's pretty good. It's like an HBO movie. Uh, but, you know, Julia Louis-Dreyfus is good in it. I'm a big Julia Louis-Dreyfus fan. If you don't watch Veep, start watching it. It's such a good show. And you'll usually see her on the uh, stage to, uh, accepting awards for that show. Uh, so it's funny to see her move into the film category and very exciting. I think she's a really good actress uh, and she's a good comedian, but she's able to show a lot of depth and, uh, um, you know, some pathos as well. So I I'm so happy to see her here. She's never going to win it, but good for her. She probably will go up later in the evening for Veep, I think. I, I didn't check the TV nominations, but I'm, I, wouldn't be I would be surprised if she wasn't nominated. And then rounding out this category is Meryl Streep for August Osage County. Good for her. Um, I think, uh, you know, you can never go wrong nominating Streep. Like, Kate Winslet's like the baby Streep. Uh, so I think putting her in there is great. Their August Osage County didn't get a ton of nominations here. You'll see another in a moment. Uh, but good for good for her. And I think in this category, I think this is, this is a weird category. I'm not sure who this is going to. Maybe Julia Louis-Dreyfus does have a shot. But maybe, you know, Adams or uh, Delphi would, would get it. I don't know. This, could, this is an open one. Well, who do you guys think might take this? Okay. Now, this is the category I find the most exciting. And it almost exactly mirrors the SAG nomination. So this might actually come true on Oscar night. And I really hope it does. Okay. Best Supporting Actor. What a race. Listen to this. First nomination, Barkhad Abdi from Captain Phillips. First role, guy comes from Minnesota with pretty much no acting experience. He is an immigrant from Kenya. Uh, <clears throat> I believe it's Kenya. Yeah, uh, no, I'm not sure. Oh, okay, ah, sorry. But from Africa, from the, you know, from the, um, oh, Somalia, I think. It's Somalia. Ah, damn, Somali pirates, sorry. From that part of the world. What a great story. Immigrates to the United States. 
lands a role in a movie opposite Tom Hanks, steals the movie from Tom Hanks, and now is nominated for a Golden Globe, a SAG Award, and potentially an Oscar. I'm just rooting for him for that alone. I think that's so exciting, and he really is good in the movie. So that's just fantastic news. I think that is the highlight of this uh, award nominations. Okay, next up, Cherry on the Sunday, Daniel Bruhl for Rush. Such a phenomenal performance, also a SAG nominee. I am so happy for him. I was really dis disappointed that he was, with how poorly Rush did at the box office, I was like, oh, Brule, you're never gonna get a chance to shine in Hollywood. They're gonna send you back home to Germany. But that is does not, that will not be the case now. He will continue to work, thank goodness, because both Rush and the Fifth Estate were box office bombs. Re recently I looked uh, up Rush, because I was like, oh man, how did that ever do? It made like 20 million or so here in the United States total. It's just so devastating. It is one of the best films of the year, in my opinion, and to see it get a Best Picture nomination for drama, and then this for uh, Daniel Bruhl, it's like there is some justice in Hollywood, which is so rare. I'm so excited about it. Okay. Those, so either one, if either one of those guys walked up on stage, I'd be thrilled. I don't think it's going to happen though, because wait till you see the other contenders. Bradley Cooper for American Hustle. Not a big surprise, but I don't, I don't think it's going to be him. Now these are the two I think it's going to break down to. Michael Fassbender for 12 Years a Slave. He didn't need to campaign, and as some of you have said, by saying he wasn't going to campaign, he was kind of campaigning just that way. Very clever. He's like, I'm just going to tell everyone I'm not going to campaign. They're going to marvel at my integrity, and then I'll get nominated anyway, and not have to go and do all that, that annoying campaigning. And But then here, Jared Leto at Dallas Buyers Club. I feel that Matthew McConaughey is getting a nomination as well, but this film is winning for Leto. Leto is the one who wins, and I think that could continue. He's very, very good in the role. Um, and you'll see him here. He's also a SAG nominee, great actor, great performance. I think the highlight of the film, which I had some problems with. But good, that's a very fascinating category. I think, with the exception of Cooper, um, I have to see American Hustle still, hopefully this weekend. But, uh, you know, out of that group, I think he's the least exciting. Poor Bradley Cooper. Okay, all right, so Best Supporting Actress. This is surprising, Sally Hawkins for Blue Jasmine. Everybody was talking about Kate Blanchett, so it's nice to see some of, her, uh, some of the attention just go a little bit to the side and get her and give her a Supporting Actress nomination. She's a very good actress, um, and so that's, that's great to see her, and she's gonna be, I believe, in, uh, I think she's in, yeah, I think she's in Godzilla, so, you know, she has a big year coming up too. So great for Sally Hawkins. Then Jennifer Lawrence, of course, is nominated. Uh, I think there are good enough contenders here, though, that I don't think Jennifer Lawrence will have a repeat after doing so well last year, but it's great to see her be able to walk the carpet again. She doesn't just have to show up to support American Hustle. She is also nominated. And again, David O. Russell, I believe, uh, yes, in every category and uh, that he's uh, for the comedy musical, he has an actor nomination. He lands one in each one, just like he did for Silver Linings Playbook. So he is, a lot of actors are gonna be calling him up saying, please put, you me, put me in your movie. I too would like to be nominated for awards. All right, then, Lupita Nyong'o from 12 Years a Slave. She's really good in this movie. I think she's actually the best performance in the film. I'm not surprised at all that she's been nominated. She's getting nominated across the board. This is great. This is her first major role, although I think it's hilarious. She also plays a flight attendant in uh, that Liam Neeson uh, airplane movie, so I think uh, that's hilarious. You know, you gotta pay your dues. So I think it's funny that she just can't jump right to all these prestige roles. She's, she's, she's doing the, she's, you know, doing the whole, running the gamut. So she's nominated. She's very good in the role. I think nobody should underestimate her for a potential win here. Then Julia Roberts for August Osage County. That's surprising. Good for her. Um, I'm seeing that film, I believe, next week, so I, I'm not quite sure how these performances have come out, but that's impressive for her to get nominated for that. Uh, so it's great, you know, she doesn't make a lot of movies these days, so I'm glad that she can still, you know, get some attention. All right, um, then also there's June Squibb for Nebraska. Also, you know, I believe also a SAG nominee. Uh, expect to see her at the Oscars. Just more love for Nebraska. People love that movie in the industry. It's crazy. All right, so good for her. Good for June Squibb. All right, so then, best director. Now, they don't separate the director category uh, or the supporting actors, as you're seeing. So director. And director, usually you'll see this is how it's going to be mirrored at the Oscars. All right, so best director, Alfonso Cuaron, Gravity. I think everybody expected that. Uh, and I think he has a very good chance of taking it. Then I think here, this is, this is fascinating. Paul Greengrass for Captain Phillips. Boy, I don't know if you're going to see this kind of love for Captain Phillips anywhere else. As I said, this is Scott Rudin working that relationship with the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. Uh, but, you know, he did, he's a very good director. I don't think he did anything groundbreaking here, but it's nice to see him get the nomination. And I think, you know, I think that him, his, him just insisting on realism for the film and hiring these Somali uh, immigrants is really fantastic. And I think he deserves some kudos for that. I don't know if he deserves a Best Director nomination, 
but maybe they needed to fill the category. I'm not quite sure. Although there are some really big names left out here, so I don't really know if people would feel Paul Greengrass should have got this nomination. Then Steve McQueen, 12 Years a Slave. Uh, expect McQueen to take these directing nominations across the board. I really feel that uh, he's going to get a lot of attention for this film, and it's been, you'll, I've seen a few, um, you know, film critics associations not giving 12 Years a Slave the major wins, but giving the win to McQueen. As we've discussed before in previous years, they like to spread the wealth to various films so everybody can walk away with a little something. Uh, and so the director category is 12 Years a Slave strongest category. Good for him. He did a very good job. I think he really deserves his nomination. And this is something that's going to take his career to a really important level. Then Alexander Payne from Nebraska. They, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association loves this movie, but they're not alone. This is not, they're not going out on a ledge here. They have their finger on the pulse of Hollywood, and Hollywood loves Nebraska. So you're seeing that nomination. Then you're seeing David O. Russell for American Hustle. Uh, David O. Russell, you know, he also very rarely wins. I think great for him, though. Again, nominated. I'm glad that he only, not, not just his actors got attention. But I don't think he's going to win here either. I think this is really between Quran and McQueen. Uh, a very nice, very, two worthy candidates, two worthy winners. Uh, a very good competition here. So we'll see who takes it. All right, so then the other category I wanted to cover was animated feature, because there's something interesting that happened here. They only nominated three films. They're all very commercial. They did The Croods, Despicable Me 2, and Frozen. Uh, I find, I don't know, I think that none of those, you know, you, Frozen's such a big hit that I think that that will probably take the win because it's, uh, it's just so beloved by so many people. Um, well, I don't know. You know, I think it might be, it might be split. Uh, I always try and gauge the, the reaction. You know, I really hated it. I think it had a lot of serious flaws in the storytelling. Uh, I would, you know, it's kind of like giving the award to Brave. It's, it's like, I feel it's the same category of like, you know, you're giving it to the more the studio and like the love of the, the fan reaction to the film than the actual quality of the film itself. Uh, but, you know, I think if I, if I had to pick one of those movies, I mean, I don't really think any of them actually deserve an award. Uh, but I guess I would go with Despicable Me 2. But even that, I felt the first one was a little bit better than that one. So I don't know. Now, now you might be like, what about The Wind Rises? I thought that was on like a, a, a march towards winning the Oscar for Best Animated Feature. I think it still is. And this is where it gets interesting. It's nominated for Best Foreign Film here at the Golden Globes. That's fascinating. Uh, and I think that we might then see that at the Oscars. And so you'll have a foreign animated film get into that major category, just like we've seen Beauty and the Beast, Made History doing that, and then uh, subsequently Up and Toy Story 3. So that will that's really fascinating. And The Wind Rises, if they feel it's good enough to be nominated for Best Foreign um, Film, the whole film category, that's just really high praise for the movie and just, I think, helps its Oscar campaign even more than uh, having to go up against the Croods, Despicable, Despicable Me Too, and Frozen. That's just, it's like, what doesn't fit here? All right, so that's the major nominations for the Golden Globes. What do you guys think? Do you, what do you think of the surprises? What do you think? Do you agree that Captain Phillips deserves as much love? Are you as happy as I am to see Rush and Philomena in there? And do you agree with me that Nebraska is a head scratcher? Or do you totally see where the industry is coming from on that? Uh, write your thoughts down below. Stay tuned for more coverage for this uh, uh, and all of award season coverage, including uh, in-depth Oscar coverage when those nominations come out in the middle of January. Uh, and uh, thank you for tuning in, and you can check out some more episodes right now.